Dwayne The Rock Johnson might actually run for president. Um, he did an interview with GQ where they discussed exactly that. Here's a good summary of it. Is Dwayne Johnson ready to rock the White House? <laughs> the Baywatch actor has mulled over a run for office uh, for the last couple of years. And given that the Oval, the Oval is now occupied by a man with, how do we put this nicely, an unconventional political resume, it doesn't seem as far-fetched. Speaking with GQ and a wide-ranging profile about his political ambitions and all-around nice guy charm, Johnson calls a run for presidency a real possibility. A year ago, it started uh, coming up more and more, he said. There was a real sense of earnestness which made me go home and think, let me really rethink my answer and make sure I am giving an answer that is truthful and also respectful. As a, as a registered independent, Johnson has expressed support for both Republican and Democratic candidates in the past, but refused to publicly endorse either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton in the 2016 election. According to Johnson, both candidates tried to court him for support, <laughs> but instead he stayed silent to let Americans make up their own minds, and so they did. Quote, I feel like I'm in a position now where my word carries a lot of weight and influence, which of course is why they want the endorsement, Johnson said, of keeping his political opinions to himself. But I also have a tremendous amount of respect for the process and felt like if I did share my political views publicly, a few things would happen. I felt like it would either A, make people unhappy with the thought of whatever my political view was, and also it might sway an opinion, which I didn't want to do. What? <laughs> Besides his unwavering support for the troops, it's unclear exactly what kind of President Johnson would be in terms of political priorities, but he did express disdain for Trump's travel ban without hesitation in the interview. I completely disagree with it, the actor said. I believe in our national security to the core, but I don't believe in a ban that bans immigrants. I believe in inclusion. Our country was built on that, and it continues to be made strong by that, and the decision felt like a snap judgment. Another way he would differentiate himself from Trump is by welcoming the opposition instead of stifling it. When asked about how the president is doing, Johnson didn't outright criticize Trump, but he did place an emphasis on bringing his detractors into the fold if he should wind up in the highest political office. Personally, I feel that if I were president, poise would be important. Leadership would be important. Taking responsibility for everybody. If I didn't agree with someone on something, I wouldn't shut them out. I would actually include them, he explained. The first thing we'd do is we'd come and sit down and we'd talk about it. Okay, understand some, man. I like The Rock. I do. Uh, you know, when I was younger, during the Attitude Era, I was a huge WWE fan. Me and my buddy, well, at the time it was WWF. Uh, me and my buddy would do trampoline wrestling, and it was the best fucking time ever. We'd have our little fucking goofy wrestling dolls, we'd be fucking DDTing them, power bombing them and shit. And, uh, we'd do, it's hilarious, whenever we would do the, you know, you throw somebody into the ropes in professional wrestling and they run back at you. So it's already goofy enough in the professional wrestling sense, but, uh, on the trampoline there were no ropes. And we would, like, throw the other person, they'd run and come back, and then we'd close on and we used to record it and shit. Uh, so, I love wrestling. The Rock is a tremendous character in the wrestling ring. He does really ooze charisma. And when you read the original GQ interview on this, um, you get a perfect sense of how he is. Like, he's a really rare dude in that... And the person who writes up peace keeps saying this. Like, I felt like he was my best friend, like, three minutes after meeting him. He was genuinely curious about my life and everything about you know, what I had gone through and what my opinions are, and he wanted to talk, and he wanted to get to know me, and he wanted to make me feel comfortable, and I believe all of that. And, you know, he's the high, he's literally, I think, the highest paid actor now in the world. <laughs> like, he is just, he made, what did they say, like $60 million or some ridiculous number last year. So, the guy oozes charisma. I like him. You know, he's got that charm, that X factor where you just look at it like, oh, I like that guy, ah, you know, one of the, it's one of those guys. Um, but what are we talking about here? I mean, come on, man. We're going to, president, president, I just read you the whole piece. You got one policy position. I'm against banning all Muslims. File that under the duh category, like... I don't want to ban all immigrants or ban all Muslims. 
Like, that's bad. Thank you, The Rock. We really appreciate that. It's, uh, of course! That's so easy! That's so fucking easy! And then, again, so, here's why I despise this, even though I like The Rock. He's just a fucking Hollywood movie star now who's charming. People know virtually nothing about what he really believes in terms of policy, and they're like, Save us, The Rock! <laughs> I mean, that's a really r rotting, broken society. Like, we, next it's, let's get Liam Neeson, because he's, you know, he's a badass in those Taken movies, so... Obviously make a good president. Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Look at the character. He's always righteous, and, and he's fighting for justice. He's out for justice, man. You got Steven Seagal. Let's go. Steven Seagal 2020. That's... That, that's not the right fucking... Skill set. It's not. We like you when you're charming. Be the leader of the free world and determine what's supposed to happen with fucking North Korea and the marginal tax rate. <laughs> and then the part where I really got pissed was the all of his quotes, because all of his quotes are just bullshit. And again, he's one of those guys. Like, if you look at Tom Perez, Tom Perez vagueness and how general he speaks. I'm for good things. I'm against bad things. I just want everybody to know that. Like, okay, in his case, it's somewhat nefarious because he's de deflecting from, you know, doing the bidding of his corporate donors and he doesn't want to say I'm for Medicare for all because he's not. In the case of The Rock, I just don't think he knows about actual policies and what's the right thing to do. So this is him giving honest answers, but his honest answers are just airhead answers. Look at that. Uh, personally, I would feel that if I were president, poise would be important. The fuck does that mean? Leadership would be... Leadership would be important. Taking responsibility for everybody would be important. And you know what? I wouldn't shut out the people who disagree with me. I'd include them. So again, you have to file that under the same category. That kind of a, a comment, you file that under the same category. I have four good things and against bad things and stronger together, break down the barriers, equality is nice, fairness is good, we're in favor of fairness, our opponents are against fairness. You're not saying anything. You're moving your mouth, and it's just a bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Bleh. You want you, you want to help people? You really want to do this? Medicare for all, single payer. Hey, we look at the studies. Every other modern nation has one version or another. We don't. We have forty five thousand people die every year because they don't get basic care. We have over ten million uninsured people. We got medical bills is one of the top causes of bankruptcy. Let's get serious. You know, do you know if you work a full time job, you don't make enough money to survive? Maybe we should make the minimum wage a living wage. Hey, did you know we're doing seven different interventions right now? Maybe we shouldn't, since none of those seven countries were about to wage an offensive attack against us, and we needlessly are bombing the fuck out of them. Th that's substance! That's substance! Hey, did you know we, ha we incarcerate more people than anywhere else in the world, and we have a stupid drug war where we lock people up for uh, tweaking their consciousness with a substance? No. Uh, I feel uh, uh, poise is important. Poise is good leadership. I'm in favor of leadership and stuff, and, you know, I would sit down with people I disagree with. Vote for me. We're, we're a joke. Like, that's, it's sad. We've become a joke. We've become a joke. And you know what? Part of me can't blame people because the establishment has failed them for so long that they're looking for anything anti-establishment. And they look at a guy like The Rock, and some people might think, this is what happened with Trump, a goofy fucking reality star, but he used some anti-establishment rhetoric. So people went, everything is fucking me so bad. Like, the whole system is... Half the country makes $30,000 a year or less. The system, over 70% of the American people live paycheck to paycheck. The system has screwed you so goddamn long that you said, I'm gonna roll the dice on this buffoon. He's got a meerkat on his head, he dyes his fucking face orange. Here, roll the dice, fuck it, maybe he does something good. <laughs> so, in a way, I don't blame people, but to turn anti-establishment, don't turn goofy anti-establishment with entertainers who don't know their ass from their elbow and don't know policy. And again, I like The Rock, it's not personal. But turn towards anti-establishment in a way that's productive. Turn towards the people who are giving you real specific policies that'll fix your life. But that's the point, is I think... I don't think you have the same thing. Like, on the right, they pretend to hate Hollywood and stars. They fucking love it. They're all star fuckers. The second... Ha! <laughs> Clint Eastwood spoke to a chair! Wasn't it awesome? I hate celebrities and politics unless they agree with me. So, but I don't think that stuff works on the left as much. I don't. I think that, you know... 
they they fell we fell for the rhetoric of Barack Obama with the fake populism, even though he was a standard neoliberal. But yes, this is why Bernie Sanders had went from zero percent in the polls to forty seven percent and won twenty two states. He's a thousand years old. He's not sexy at all. He speaks with a heavy accent. But oh, substance. People ran to the substance. So give people the substance, they'll come to it. Don't give people the fucking again the rock. Nothing against you, man, but. Seriously, come on. You're, this isn't you. This isn't you. You're a really charming Hollywood type guy. But when you give answers, like, oh, poison leadership is great. Yeah, vote for me. It's just goofy and it's wrong and you're not going to fix the country that way.